confidence, back yourself to the end. You got to be your biggest fan. That's my main one of my main sort of principles. Is if because no one you can't force anyone to to like your music other than you. Yeah. So just uh, force yourself to be your biggest fan, and yeah. put yourself out there to everyone. Put put everything out there. Don't try and release everything. Is one of the things that I always stand by. Every everything I make goes out because you never know someone might like it. You're listening to Lunch Break, a producer podcast, brought to you by Audio Junkyard. Welcome back to another episode of Lunch Break, a producer podcast where we have casual conversations with music producers from all walks of life. This is episode five, and I'm here today with Ruben Sanchez. How are you doing, Ruben? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> good, How are good. You? I'm good. I'm good. My son's at my mom's right now, so I've got a nice gap of time here to do this, knock this out. Look good. So, um, let's just jump right in. Uh, where are you from, and how long have you been producing music? Uh, I'm from uh, Brighton, England, and I've been making, I'm producing for three years, making music for since I was a kid, always playing instruments and stuff. Nice. nice. So for ten years or so. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, how old are you? Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. That's what I thought. Um, so, are you in college? Uh, university. Yeah. 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 So, do you? Um, are you able to stay at home, or do you stay on campus? I I stay like ten minutes from campus. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing. Nice music and music production at uni oh, so it's awesome. pretty good yeah 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 that's awesome that's what i went to school for so uh what's your program like do you have a lot of like basic how to use a doll classes or is it it's like uh it's a, just a music course but they have a lot of production stuff so it's all like uh just people who play classical instruments and stuff so it's very a lot of simpler topics sometimes and sometimes yeah. i have to do music theory and classical yeah that's kind of how my uh my, when I went to college, I had already been playing guitar for like 15 years or something. And I had to take like an intro to guitar class as part of my <laughs> requirements. So in the production class and they're talking about like how to use logic. I was just sitting there just <laughs> waiting for it to be over. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So is that what you use? Do you use logic normally? Are you able no, to? I use, I, I, I'm Ableton, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I started on, well, I started on Soundtrap. I started on Logic and then switch, switched to Ableton. I started on Reason, actually, of all things. I don't know if you know Reason, but it was actually called Record. But, like, they had Reason, which didn't have the ability to record audio in the beginning, only MIDI. And then they went, when they introduced the way to record audio, they, they called it Record, and that's what I started on. And eventually, through a series of YouTube tutorials, I ended up on Ableton because <laughs> it seemed, seemed better. I don't remember. I think I watched Kenny Beats on Ableton. Okay, yeah. And switched instantly. <laughs> yeah. Mine was Andrew Huang. I was watching some Andrew Huang stuff and I'm like, okay, I need to just yeah. make the switch here. That's how I started producing was I watched Andrew Huang. Yeah. As the first guy. I was like, wow, what is this? Yeah. He's so, he's such a good, like, he really opened my mind to how much more you can do with audio manipulation than I ever realized. Because growing up as a musician, I just... You play your chords and you, you make your song like that. And I had never been introduced to like any sort of audio manipulation. So yeah, once I saw his stuff, I'm like, okay, this could be a lot of fun actually. Yeah. I mean, I was just a jazz saxophonist, so I knew nothing. I didn't even listen to hip hop or anything. And then I just came across, not that Andrew Hong does hip hop, but uh, I just came across his, uh, his page and that's what went down the rabbit hole. He's super, super good for getting people into the into music as well. That's what I love about his videos. Because it's like, you can watch it, I feel like, if you know nothing about music. Yeah, I agree. I was actually thinking about that. There's been a few YouTube guys that have managed to break out of the musician audience. Like, I think Kyle Beats has done it also. Because any, any of these guys with like a million subscribers, that's not a million producers watching them. You know, they've, they're entertaining non-musicians as well, which is... Which is really interesting. Yeah, well, I saw, I mean, I think I saw Carl Beats do a poll and uh, of um, how many people are actually musicians or whatever that watch him. It was like 25% that actually made beats or anything. So it's crazy. That is crazy. That is yeah. crazy. There's so many ways to, like, make money in this industry. You yeah. know, it's insane. Um, so 
You mentioned that you're a saxophone player. I'm assuming you've picked up a few other instruments along the way. Yeah, a couple. I just started bass, actually, but I've uh, picked up guitar and piano are the two two things. But I play them on every... I try, I try to get better at the instruments. The issue is I can just produce and <laughs> make it sound like I'm, I'm better. So I try and practice, but that's my, uh, my block. But yeah. Yeah, I get that. It's like... Do I, you, you have to like choose speed or like purity, I guess. I don't know. I do the same thing. It's like I can play the piano, but it's so much easier for me to just write it in. That, that's what I normally do. Yeah. I always, I, I play everything in because I obviously, I make solo loops. So I try and get the, but then anything difficult, I just go straight to writing in. And don't, don't try and practice or anything. And I think that's maybe something I need to work on or maybe not, but... Uh... Yeah, soul, you can't really pencil in like a pocket, I guess. You need a pocket for, for soul music. Uh, do you make do you drums as well, or you mostly stick to the loops? Um, I switch. I do. I have. I've, I made a bunch of beats recently, actually. So I do do a lot of um, like early 2000s Kanye, Jay Z type mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, mainly focusing on the loops right now. But that's where I started. I only started making loops um, six, seven months ago. Okay. I didn't realize that. So before that was all beats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So were you into soul music before that? Well, I got into soul music through sampling. So I have a huge, um, well, not huge. I don't want to brag. But I have a, <laughs> a big record collection that I've just gotten from sampling from vinyl and stuff. And then I start actually listening to the music and enjoying it. Yeah, that's, so that's great. I feel like that's probably the only way I would want to work with, I don't know, there's something cool about the sampling from records that I've never done myself, that it's like in the back of my mind that I know I would love. Yeah, it's so much fun. It co it's just the, the, the money is a problem. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, the records are not cheap. <laughs> They're not cheap, but um, it's so much fun, especially the whole thing of going down to the record shop because the people that work there, give you recommendations and you get you find loads of new cool i mean i found more music through that than anything else yeah more new music i like yeah that's awesome that's awesome so um so you've been producing so you were making beats for a while before you were making loops then yeah yeah so uh once you got started like is there anything that you wish you had done differently when you first got started i don't know i didn't um start in a sense as like oh i was going to be a producer it was sort of a slow a slow thing where i just started messing around with stuff i would say i would have gotten into the business side of stuff earlier yeah because it's only in the last maybe six seven months that i really started trying to turn it into a career mm -hmm. and i think i could have you definitely have to wait until you think your stuff's the right standard but i could have started sure. maybe half a year a year earlier yeah and that would have um i just sort of had fun when i started out didn't have anything in, in in mind and maybe if I had a set of goal mm. could have been better but then maybe I wouldn't have fallen in love with it as much yeah that's true that's true so these days do you find you're still able to enjoy it all the time or is it is it some like a bit of a grind sometimes or sometimes the day before I've got to get a loop kit out and I'm sat here <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah just pumping them out and it, it gets a bit tedious but most of the time I enjoy it yeah it's something I do in uh, in my off time as as well as like as a career thing sure. and i like to, to switch up and make just for fun the different stuff like house and mm -hmm. other genres i'm into nice just for practice and stuff i feel like the skills that you learn in other genres can help so much between them all like um i grew up playing a lot of music at church which obviously helps a lot when you know you're talking like soul samples and things like that and then i also listen to a lot of ska music and indie music and rock music and all all these different genres and then um once i started getting into hip-hop i found a, i'm pulling a lot from those other genres that you know kind of give i, I wouldn't say it's an advantage it's just a uniqueness that you can bring to yeah to what you're doing when you have a lot of influences like that definitely i mean i didn't start listening to rap until I mean, I hated rap. I was a very big, I was a jazz nerd. I was like, what is this music? And then maybe about three years ago, I sort of changed my mind. So my whole perspective on music is probably, is very rock and jazz and indie. 
sort of oriented. So that yeah, it plays so much into I feel like when I'm making music, stuff to pull on if I just add some random guitar solo into somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, definitely. Well, especially with a jazz background, like that's a that's a very rare background for people in the producer space. I mean, even myself as a musician, I had maybe one semester of jazz, you know, so I don't have a strong jazz background. So anything in that type of realm, it doesn't come natural to me. I have to work at it. But for you, it probably comes very natural. Well, sort of, but I never learned jazz theory or anything. Because I, I play saxophone by ear, I can I can't really read read sheet music too well, so it does that. I mean, I've got the mentality, and I can I can hear and play it by ear. But I, that's one thing I wish I did as well was um, sort of get into the theory side when I was back when I was doing that because it probably would help me now. But yeah, 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 I'm the same. Like I'm I'm okay at theory, but it's definitely my weaker point as a producer, and it's something that I was begging for as a kid. Like I I knew. I'd reached this point, I was self-taught for many years and I reached this point where I, I knew I needed a teacher. And so I was trying to find a teacher that would teach me theory and none of the teachers around here would, like everyone just taught you how to play different songs. And so I finally just eventually quit because I'm like, I, I can learn how to play a, like a song on the radio myself. I want someone to teach me like actual theory. But as an adult now thinking back, they probably didn't know theory either. And that's why they couldn't teach it to me. <laughs> yeah. It's much, a bunch of old rock heads. <laughs> yeah i went to theory classes outside of school i asked my mom and she took me to some and but they were just terrible because it would just be they'd sit you down with a book hmm. for half an hour and you'd right. read the book and i was like i don't know there's no instruments around i'm not playing the i can't yeah relate this to myself so i, I yeah. quit that that's crazy and uh, yeah I don't know how yeah. you know music theory through a book, but yeah. Yeah, like I'm at the point with it where I know theory, I can read music, but I'm slow at it. And so I, when I do something by ear, it's just a lot faster. But I have found that one of the things I'm, I need to brush up on is just the different modes because I feel like when it comes to lead lines and soloing, you can get, if you know which you know modes of scales to play or which scales to play over other keys you can get some really yeah. unique stuff and that's kind of um i think if i were to d dive into theory i'd probably just dive into scales and how they relate to chord progressions and keys and probably just leave it there yeah i don't even know the scales on the saxophone or anything <laughs> <laughs> it's bad yeah i'll be I at mean... a jam session someone will call out the key and i'll go <laughs> okay noodle around until you got it <laughs> yeah that's funny no noodle quietly in the background until like <laughs> I guess though, in yeah. um, in jazz, you can you can get away with some some notes here and there that don't quite fit, you know, out of all the just, genres. I'm just an experiment. It's experimental. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, you said you mentioned dropping loop kits. So how often do you drop them? Uh, right now, once a week, eight oh, wow. loops. Yeah, eight loops once a week. So yeah, you're you're putting in the work then. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> I had a I had a month where I didn't uh, where I I left it out. That's one thing I would say actually. Going back to the um, uh, the one thing I would have done if I was starting out was definitely consistency. I would have been a lot more consistent because I think if you just get, especially if you had the time. But then I had all the time in the world. If you just get in the door at least for thirty minutes a day, you, you would improve so much more. But through doing that, that's kind of what I. What I learned, because I don't have a lot of time right now because I got young kids and that's my goal is like, if I can put in 30 minutes, then, you know, we'll see where I end up, you know, when my, my son will start school in like five years and then I'll be, I'll have a lot of time once he starts school. And so my, I'm kind of curious to watch myself and my own growth over the next five years, just putting in that small chunk of time to see where I would have would have ended up because my, uh, my alternative was to do nothing. And then once he starts school, then I'll start. And then I realized, like, that's really foolish. I need to just build what I can now. So it's going to be fun to see, like, how much further ahead I, I'm going to be than I would have been otherwise, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's really cool, that is. That you've just, if you're super busy, you're still finding time to, to make music and stuff. Yeah, it's hard. So. It takes a lot of, I have to approach every day with a lot of intention. Like, I have to, I know exactly what I'm doing every single day. Otherwise, the day can get away from you so quickly by the time the kids are in bed at the end of the night 
I, I probably would do nothing if I didn't already commit to myself that today I'm doing this no matter what, you know? Or a lot of time management and stuff, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Lots of, lots of notion, lots of, lots of, uh, I call them retrospectives where I, I look back at my previous week and like figure out what I did wrong and what could be better for the upcoming one. And it's, it's helped yeah. a lot. I mean, I've made a lot of progress in a short amount of time with very little time also at my disposal. Yeah. So I've tried to do that so many times and just failed. So it's very yeah. good to see someone actually doing it who has probably a lot less time than me as well being able to actually do it. I failed a lot at it too. Um, I think it's natural for creative people to not em like fully embrace those like super administrative left brain types of things. Um, but I just kind of, it kind of was for me, it was like, if I don't do this, I will not succeed. <laughs> like this, it's yeah. impossible with the way my life is. So I had to just find a way to embrace it. And I, I found something that worked for me. And I think that's the key is like, if you need some sort of system, just do something. And then every week ask yourself, is this working or not? And if it's not, just keep adapting it until you land on something that works for you. And that's kind of what I did. It took me a while to like refine it, but I've, mm -hmm. I found a good I'm at a good place with it now to where it's like automatic and it fits my life and it it helps me like get everything done that I want to get done. Yeah, that's super, super interesting. Yeah, I know like a lot of people are only work good on paper, like paper and pen, physically writing lists. That did not work for me at all. I tried that in the beginning and I couldn't, I could not keep up with it. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. I, I tried that as well. But that, I mean, none of it worked for me. It's like, <laughs> I have to give another shot now. It's like to find yeah. something you wrote down, you're flipping through pages and all this stuff. And on Notion, I have a button. And if I have a thought or a note, I literally click the button and type it in. And it puts it in a queue for me that I can sort later. So I never lose a thought, never lose an idea. And then if I accidentally like archive the thing, there's a search bar. And I can like search up, you know, whatever I was doing. And I don't have to flip through like a bunch of notebooks. So... Yeah, flip through just five books in front of you yeah. to see what you're doing for the rest of the day. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. sound fun. No, no, it's yeah. very inefficient. Plus with the kids, like I'm like nursing the baby or I'm, you know, making lunch or something. And like, I don't want to have to, I always have my phone on me. I would not always have a notebook and a pencil around me to yeah. like do stuff. So, yeah. So um, you're at university for production. Um does that mean like your parents are pretty supportive of this as a career path and your family and stuff? They try. Yeah. <laughs> My mom tries. Yeah. That's, that's all you can ask. Really. <laughs> I don't know if she's supportive as much as tolerant. Yeah. But she is, yeah. she is very supportive. My mom, but, um, yeah. <laughs> They're concerned and wanting backup plans and these types yeah. of things. Yeah. My mom is very, the most safe person I've ever met, which is great for me. Raising, raising music and best mm. mom ever. But it's not great when I'm trying to <laughs> everything I do in music. She's very scared of, and uh, yeah, I have to do that. It makes sense. It does. But, it uh, does. But yeah. like, you're young. You know, you have, you can take these types of risks when you're young. It's a lot harder. Like, when you're older, and you have a, like a mortgage and a family. It's a lot harder to like pursue these yeah. less common paths. I guess. I remember that's the reason I kind of pursued it. I, remember I was 17. And I, this is my most distinct memory of all time. I was sat in um, like a parent teacher conference thing and they were going, your son is just mediocre and not mediocre, but I was just all mediocre grades because all I was doing was every lunchtime I would go and play in the band and or every break, every break I had in school, I just go and play music with my mates. And I was sat there and I was thinking, okay, I have to do music because if I don't take this risk now, nothing else is is screaming out to me that I want to do. I'm just going to sort of, end up doing something I don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. So that's the, it's yeah. good that you realize that because, yeah, a lot of people don't, or a lot of people do, and they're afraid to do it, or they think it won't land them where they want to be financially. But, like, I don't know, being on the other side of things and wishing I had, I mean, I don't know. I picked a job that was really, really well-paying, and I did that for a really long time. But I wish I had been doing music at the same time, you know, at least. Uh, yeah. And I didn't just because, yeah, the risk, the risk reward, I don't know, didn't really make sense to me at the time. I got married really young. We obviously had a mortgage young and things like that too, which, which 
you know, made it less uh, practical to pursue music. But looking back, I think we could have made it work if I had just, you know, put the effort in. So um, what's the hardest thing for you right now? Just to like what I want to do, figuring yeah. out where, what, what path I want to take because there's so many different things I want to do and trying to see what fits me. Right now I'm trying sort of artist stuff, vocal stuff, you know, still trying to make beats, but focusing mainly on the loops. But then there's also days where it's like, oh, I want to do this now. I wake up and I go, oh, I want to start making house. Yeah. And obviously that's not, not viable. I think that's one of the most restrictive things about the producer scene. Yeah. At least if you're trying to make money in it, it's like you kind of have to stick to one niche and master mm -hmm. it. And uh, yeah, it's probably the biggest struggle. Yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. And there are so many paths that you could take. And yeah, if you're interested in all of them, you want to explore them all, but you don't want to dilute your brand in the process, you know? Yeah. You have a bunch of aliases, you know? <laughs> Ruben Sanchez, house music. Ruben Sanchez, this and that. <laughs> so, did you land on Soul Loops because you love it, or because it seems like, like a, a the most viable like path to full time production? Or I definitely a little bit of both because I definitely really enjoy making um, Soul Loops. I probably prefer making beats. The and it, just the energy of making a beat is a lot more um, exciting. But Soul Loops, I can do more consistently and is more viable i think i have more to offer in terms of because if you have a laptop you can make beats not everyone can play the instruments i play so i thought if i want to take an avenue where i sort of have an advantage it's definitely the, that's the one for me to pick yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah. um so you mentioned artists so you're interested in working with artists directly or being an artist yourself sometimes yeah being an artist i do some vocal recording stuff nice nothing crazy but yeah. yeah. So what genre is that then? Is it in like, hip hop or is it other genres? Yeah, like hip hop, psychedelic stuff. Yeah, cool. Travis Scott influenced stuff. Yeah. So cool. I've just been doing that. That's awesome. I think, side. I mean, even if you never went anywhere with it or decided you didn't want to go that route, even just the experience of approaching the song as an artist is super yeah. valuable. It's really fun. And I was just, I mean, yesterday I've recorded a song. And it was just me in my my friend's my friend's flat, and we were just the energy was so good. And it's also because he made the beat and engineered for me and did everything. So it's cool to be on the other side and sort of see how it is and see because he's a really good he was a really good engineer. And it's cool to see how sort of if I wanted to do that if I wanted to be in studios and stuff, see how I could do that myself and see it in action. Yeah, which is yeah. really cool. Yeah, for sure. I love engineering. It's something I never get to do for other people, really. Um, and it's not the same when you're doing it for yourself. So I, I've I've got a like a artist background. I never released any stuff, but I have a lot of music recorded and songs that I've written and stuff. But it's different when you're doing it all yourself. But yeah, like a good engineer, like if you can, if you want to be in rooms and you're a producer, but you can engineer, it's such an advantage, especially if you're good, because if you can learn like how to punch in and out good and how to make sure you're at the right part of the track for the artist, like super, super valuable and they'll want you back. And then, you know, that's the easy, easy dub for, as far as pitching your beats, you know? Yeah. I've told him he has to teach me everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I just felt like what, he was on top of everything. Mm. Like I was, before I was even ready to record the line, like he'd already had it set up for me to start recording and going. And I was yeah. like, I need to learn how to do this because if I get in a room, I can do this. Yeah, it's levels it, ahead. extremely, and unfortunately, a lot of people are not that good. So it's very easy to get an advantage like that, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do they, are they going to go over that type of stuff at, in your program that you're in at university? Probably not. I don't think it's more on the composition side oh, okay. in the on the production stuff gotcha. and then it's a lot of performance as well so you know ableton push mm. like live dj performance stuff is a lot of what i do yeah cool. more than like studio production yeah that's cool though <laughs> um so then you're in you're in university so what's your what's your day-to-day -day like oh messy <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> I don't really have a day to day. Okay. It's just sort of stuff happens. Yeah. I'm I'm terrible with like 
having anything organized in my life, which is definitely something I need to work on. But um, yeah, every day is super different for me right now, which is interesting and cool, but definitely hard to, hard to stay on top of. Um, but yeah, I mean, I try things I try to do every day. I try and read a bit um, and always make some music at least two hours every day. I mean, those are at least getting those two things in are super valuable, at least. Um, so when it comes to your business, though, do you have like any organizational methods for keeping up with your um, your packs that you're dropping and your website and all those types of things? Uh, I'm usually on the packs. I'm usually on top of it unless I'm like going. So the only time I really have to organize it is if I'm going away. So I was go I had went to Madrid over Christmas. So I had to um, sort of do double time the week before to make sure I get the packs. And I've started sort of doing um, double sessions to because I want to release my first paid kit. So I'm going to have to have 30 extra loops on top of the free ones I'm dropping. So I've started having to sort of manage it more. But there's not too much. It's just sort of I just deal with it when it comes up. I probably should look ahead. But... <laughs> So you're dropping these packs regularly. Are you are you finding that you're steadily growing like an email list or some sort of contact list for it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I've got quite a big list now, luckily. Yeah. Uh, I, I send out emails. Every other pack I send out an email because I don't want to be, I yeah. don't know, sending too many emails. Yeah. But That's I'm definitely awesome. going to push. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to push that when I go to release paid kits. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So do you have a, like a cadence plan for your paid kits? Is it going to be, I've, it probably won't be weekly, obviously, but like monthly paid ones or something like that? I think just when they're ready, I'd rather yeah. not try and promise something and under deliver. I'd rather over deliver. Mm. Um, I don't think, I, I I don't know, maybe I do need it, but I don't think I need a schedule for the, for the paid ones. Yeah. It's I was thinking... More. I'm I'm going to start dropping kits sometime this year, probably like guitar stuff. And I was thinking with the free kits, do you always give stems when you do free kits? No stems. Stems, uh, stems and I do, uh, MP3. So yeah. the free version is MP3, no stems. Yeah. Paid version is $10. Yeah. And you get uh, the WAV file and the, the stems. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking uh, about doing. And when you do the stems, do you have it just stemmed out in the loop or do you have a separate folder of the stems they just stemmed out in the loop yeah because yeah, i feel like if you do a folder of stems it's gonna be such a big file i know i was thinking about that too but then i was also thinking i've got a couple people that i work with or that i send stuff to and i know they're on ipads like they're using koala sampler and i'm right. wondering for those guys for those types of people is it easy to chop off the stems on the back of the loop or would it be easier to have the individual stems with the start files. So it's something I've been thinking in my head because it's like whenever I use Koala Sampler, I mean, it's easy to chop, but like you're not going to get it exactly right, you know, pulling yeah. it from the end of a stem. So something I was thinking about. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I didn't think of that. Or like if someone's on an NPC or something. Yeah. Then that's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, something to think about. Like I don't work in um, like the boom bap type of genre very often, or work with soul samples. So, mm -hmm. but I, for people that like in your space, it's very sample heavy work. So, yeah, it's a lot of people on NPCs and stuff. Yeah. And other like beat beat machines. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how easy the the workflow would be, chopping yeah. s chopping samples in there. I don't know. Yeah, might be worth you know before you drop is ask, asking some guys like, hey, you know, what's easier to work with? Because obviously from a file size perspective, it's so much more convenient. Or like if you're in Ableton, so much more convenient just dropping in one file and chopping it up like it takes five seconds. But yeah, yeah if you're on a machine of some sort, uh, you know, not maybe not so easy. Yeah, I never thought about that actually. <laughs> That's a really good point. And it might be an advantage too. Like if, if other people are dropping are harder to to chop up then they'll come back to you more often you know if you're easier to work with yeah I always think you could do <laughs> <laughs> you could do both i guess yeah as well for True. people who are on a daw or for people who want the stems then that'll yeah. be like a super big file yeah yeah or you can but, make it an option where you download one or the other yeah exactly just give them a link to each like you know waves yeah. with stems in the file or you know individual stems 
track outs, I yeah. guess you could call them track outs, the same way you yeah. would do with a beat. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so what are, what are some of the tools you like to work with when you're making samples? So you, you record live guitar, live keys, live sax. So what, are, what's your gear like? I've just got a SM58 and a MIDI nice. a complete, what's it called? Complete name Context. instruments, keyboard, yeah. yeah. And that's it, really. Nice. In terms of gear. And then the focus right, obviously the interface. Mm. Yeah, but that's, it's pretty simple. I don't want to overcomplicate stuff. I have a AT2020, but I prefer the sax going through the, the 57 or the 58. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, yeah, the uh, the twenty twenty would be a, a dynamic mic is a lot better for a saxophone. I'll just put it like that. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of air coming out of it, and a lot of noise. A lot of noise. Yeah. And the the, uh, the pressing because it's the yeah, tenor, the so the, ten, the tenor is so loud with the the alto is not too bad. Yeah. But the tenor with the keys is so much better. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so you you play tenor alto? Do you play Barry? Do you have a Barry sax? I don't have one. I've I've played them before. I would love one. <laughs> oh, they're so amazing. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's like That's playing bass. I uh, I grew up listening to a lot of Dave Matthews band, and right. that guy busts out the berry for a lot of those songs, and it sounds so good. <laughs> yeah, it's and it's just so much fun to play because it's just a massive instrument. Yeah, yeah, so big. Yeah. I would die actually. <laughs> I tried I tried playing my friend's tenor saxophone, and I almost passed out. So I don't think I could handle the berry. <laughs> Um, so there's then, people that, okay. uh, oh, there's just people that dance around while playing the way we've seen Leo P. Yeah. He dances around. I was like, I'd pass out. I would like, fall over. Like super good shape. Like have to yeah. keep their cardio up just to play their instrument. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> um, so you do a lot of MIDI based stuff. So you have, do you have like some go-to libraries then that work for your soul samples? Um, yeah, just Keyscape mainly yeah. and Arteria B3 organ. And they contact Chris Hine uh, for violin. Mm. I think that's everything. Everything else I play in. I'm trying to think. Oh, and session horns. But I, I use session horns to write sax lines. And I can't play, play. I can't play sax at home because it's. Um, I got neighbors and roommates. I gotcha. live in a house of five people, so they'd start. Yeah. Try. They probably try and kill me. Yeah. <laughs> So I have to go up to the studios on, on campus to record. So I write all my all my sax lines using uh, session horns, which That's is really cool, useful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And what about for bass? What do you use for bass? For bass? What do you mean? Oh, like, I, have, you... I, have a, I have a, a bass. Oh, you, you play the bass in when yeah. you do bass? I got, oh, but before I used Modo bass. I got the bass for Christmas. Nice. Nice. So I used, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Modo bass is really, really good. And then when you're... Multimedia. When you're tracking guitar, do you have some go-to like processing plugins that you like? Yeah, just or do you keep it pretty dry. Guitar rig, yeah, a timeless clean preset, yeah, into the compressor and a reverb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's about how what they had back then, so makes sense. Yeah. Makes you don't want to, yeah, I don't want to do too much. Sometimes I like to overproduce stuff. Yeah, and then I'm thinking I'm trying to make a soul sample here. They had like maybe a reverb and a compressor in the studio if they were lucky yeah so it's like you gotta keep it i mean most of them are di actually i shouldn't even be using a um amp but it just sounds so much nicer yeah <laughs> well, a lot of those mm. a lot of those old soul stuff is all di guitar mm -hmm. straight in with no processing or anything it's it's interesting recreating eras like that you know i would it seems like it'd be a lot of fun but also yeah like you said if you get a cool creative idea but it doesn't quite fit the era anymore it's you yeah. know you have to decide if you're gonna hold yourself back or you know no way i'll just I'll, I'll let a couple of them slip into the packs yeah <laughs> like today i was I, I made like a laser sound using a like roads thing i was like this sounds too cool to not put yeah. into it <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> so it sounded really good so i was just like oh it doesn't matter yeah. that much so um you mentioned a few plugins are there any others that you uh like to use uh crystalline is super super good i love that reverb hmm. um super massive for yeah. like spacey stuff it's yeah. so good just messing with the messing automating the um the warp functions always makes really cool sounds yeah. and i love bit crushing 
Bit Crush might be my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Favorite yeah. thing to do. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. honestly, those are. Is is Crystalline free, or is that a Sound Toys one? That's Sound Toys. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the Sound Toys. It's Kilo Hearts. Or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, something like that. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah. They have Great. Kilo Hearts has a ton of free stuff. I use their Transient Shaper a lot. Yeah. I, I free trans and shape is really good. Yep. Yeah. And then every once in a while, I use their top, their tape stop because it's just so quick. quick yeah. Tease. <laughs> that um, tape stuff are good. And then super massive is free. I was just looking at. I pulled up Plug and Boutique the other day, like yesterday, and I sorted by. Well, I would click on the free categories and then sort by most rated, like top rated at in the free. And man, there's some. There's such crazy stuff. Like I don't know. Half the time, you would never even need to buy a plugin. Obviously, for instruments, it's different, but for like processing and stuff, so many good free ones. So much interesting. Like, I think, um, I forget the name of the company now. UAD released like some crazy one for free as well. There's always, yeah, there's always something new as well. I feel there's always some new free plugin that's just awesome as well. Yeah. And then, um, was it Arturia released? like a timed free ones. Like I think it's called Re refracts or something. I grabbed that. I haven't used it a lot, but it was only free for like a month. Yeah. I heard so of I that one, but it. I missed it. Oh no. I missed the one it before it. They dropped, a, they dropped one before that I had missed and I was bummed. So I made sure not to miss this one. It got sent to me by someone like, and then I was like, Oh, I'll just download it later. And then I went to go download it later and it, I couldn't. I was like, Oh, closed. I know. I, I know. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I've been using, I don't know if you've seen Delay, D-E-E-L-A-Y. It's a delay plugin, but it's got some crazy like reverse modes in it. It's, there's like a chaos reverse and regular reverse and like a, I forget what they call it. There's like three different reverse modes. So I've been using that a lot lately, which has been fun. But I do a lot of like moody, darker stuff. And yeah. so I like to use that kind of stuff for that. Probably wouldn't fit the soul genre but maybe some of the other stuff you mess around with i used the today i actually used you know back mask for their free that's free, freak show industries mm -mm, i don't know it. they have a bunch of well the the plugins are free but they're like meant to be paid but they give you an option to get them for free okay yeah so but um that one is a super cool like it chops and reverses the sample for you and you can do oh, it by nice. like milliseconds and time and they have other stuff that just like destroys your sound and uh, really crazy I, I might need to look at What's it called? Uh, the brand's called Freak Show Industries. Okay. They have, and the plugins look super cool. Like they have weird. All right, I'm gonna look that up. Stuff. Cause that's that's like, I do that so much. That's like my go-to. Yeah. It's like I finish a guitar sample and then I resample it and I chop it and I reverse it and I just listen to like what it could become. So that might yeah. that might be fun to play with. Their plugins are probably really good for that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, who's your favorite producer? And this is a hard one because you d you dabble in a lot of stuff. This is tough. Yeah. I can maybe do like top. <laughs> yeah, you can do, you can give a list. Yeah. Mike Mike Dean has to be up there, yeah. as well as Rick Rubin. I love this book. Oh yeah, same. I'm, I haven't quite finished it, but yeah. it's very good. I, I read it on holiday, and I was just by the pool reading the book. It was good good times. So inspiring. And yeah, super. It's a bit. Um, I have to take it with a grain of salt when it comes to Rick Rubin because he's a bit, um, yeah, a bit of a nut job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's still very good. Yeah. And so, yeah, so Mike Dean, Rick Rubin, Pharrell, Metro right now is super yeah. inspiring what he's doing. And I mean, he's like, he, I think he was top 10 most streamed rap artists as, as a producer, which is crazy. That is crazy. Of last year. So what he's doing is just awesome, I think. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah. And Conway. Conway the Machine, who's doing all the stuff, all, all the boom bap stuff on Drake's album and stuff. Mm. It's cool to see him. I've been watching him for ages. It's yeah. cool to see him get to there. That's awesome. I'm trying to think. Yeah. And Kenny Beats. I mean, Kenny Beats is, how do I forget? Kenny, Kenny Beats is like probably one of my biggest inspirations. I have, I have his album on cassette and vinyl and I went to his show. That's awesome. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a mega fan. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. A bit of a fan. But his show was so good because it was um, all producers, all like creatives. Yeah, I, I never realized he toured. I, I don't know how I didn't yeah. realize that. Yeah, he does. He does DJ sets. 
Okay. And uh, yeah, it was it was so good because I just met a bunch of really cool people. Yeah. And then the set was awesome as well. So yeah, that's probably my my favorite producers. That's very cool. So, uh, what about artists? Like, if you had to give artists. your top top five. Top five. Oh my god. One Kanye. Hmm. Michael is up there. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Pink Floyd. Why can't I think of anyone? I mean, that's probably my top three. Yeah, I mean, that's a great top three. Yeah. It's pretty much flawless. You can't really go wrong. Yeah. Can't go wrong with them. Probably Thug, Young Thug. In four. And five, I'll go with... Tyler. Tyler's been super inspirational for me recently. So, yeah. Cool. Tyler Korea. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, so we're, we're almost done here, but um, a few more things before we go. Number one... Uh, I have the question listed as give out some sauce. So do you have any tips or tricks or sauce for the people? And it could be on any any subject, loops, beats, artistry, whatever. Sauce. Stay consistent is the number one thing. Yeah. Confidence, back yourself to the end. You've got to be your biggest fan. That's my main, one of my main sort of principles is if, because no one, you can't force anyone to, to like your music other than you. Yeah. So just uh, force yourself to be your biggest fan and yeah. put yourself out there to everyone put, put everything out there don't try and release everything is one of the things that i always stand by Every, everything i make goes out because you never know someone might like it yeah i love that be your own biggest yeah. fan I, I forget who it was it was on twitter and i forget who who tweeted it now I, I need to go back and look but they said or maybe it was i don't know i don't remember anyways they said anytime they post something tweet something they're always their first like like they like yeah. it themselves first and oh and that was was it russ i was gonna yeah maybe it was russ yeah, I, was I think thinking, it was russ. i didn't know if it was Lil russell but maybe it was russ oh no it was the russell yeah it was the i get they have the same name yeah it was because yeah, he's always posting super super good stuff yeah i love that because it's like yeah man you feel like you think about it in, the, in your own brain it's like it feels kind of cheesy to do but at the same time the way he put it it's like i'm gonna be the first one rocking with what I'm doing, and I love that, yeah. you know? I love how he put that. Yeah, that's, that's really cool, for sure. Cool. So um, plug yourself a little bit. So you make amazing soul samples. They're so good. So Thank let you. people know where they can find them and, you know, buy them, and join your list, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, Retroplug on YouTube. You're going to have to search Retroplug samples because otherwise it's going to be a bunch of vintage video game stuff. <laughs> so, which I should have checked before I started it. Yeah, but Retro Plug samples on YouTube. Uh, Ruben Sanchez Beats on Instagram. And yeah. You have a That's website? That's what I have to find. Yeah, I do have a website. It's uh, loopplug.shopify something. If you go on the, the YouTube, it will be okay. in the description. So awesome. I don't remember the handle. I messed up the handle when I made it as well. So. Amazing. <laughs> I can't change it. Uh, amazing. So we'll we'll link to all that stuff too um, in the description and in the show notes. That way people can find you easily um, wherever they're watching. With all of that said, that is it for today. So if you want to connect with Ruben um, or learn more about anything that we talked about, like we mentioned a lot of cool plugins, books, uh, different things like that, his website, um, all of those things will be in the show notes, which you can find in the description. Um, or you can go to Audio Junkyard. That's audiojunkyxrd.com slash podcast. And you can find the show notes there as well. And I think that is it. So thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next one.